welcome ladies and gentlemen into our latest series, Hitting That Distance. Today I'm down on the outskirts of Torquay on a little rock mark and uh, we're down here today with one thing in mind. Going to try and show you three different methods of casting for your fishing to get you further out into that deeper water where hopefully those bigger fish lay up. Now, I'm not necessarily the right person to show you. On, I, I've been shown how to cast and that, but as, as with always in everything with Sea Angle Adventures, is having about the right guys doing the right job. And um, this guy we're bringing down here today, a good friend of mine and fellow Sea Angle Adventures member, Adam Slack, as, uh, is, is the right guy to do it. Um, Adam will go through the, the basics of the cast and the, the science, to be honest, right around the technique of the cast. And it's to do with lead positioning, it's to do with arm placement, leg placement, and there's a lot of things combined in step by step what we'll go through. So hopefully helping a few of you pick up some uh, hints and tips and getting you a little bit further distance. Now, we're not necessarily going to go through a tournament style of casting today because at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is get guys a little bit further with a fishing cast. Now, Adam, I know, was, was very heavily involved with the casting scene um, and uh, he still, he still it's just a big part of his life still. Where, where myself, I was always going to the casting to develop extra distance and skills with being able to put a bait out of very long way and um, I do go back to it every like when the winter time comes I go back on like a January or February maybe have a few chucks in the field with a few of the, um, the guys down at uh, either Westwood Casting or Weymouth Casting and um, I really enjoy it they're really nice guys guys and, and to be honest if if you're practicing this sort of casting yeah and obviously we're not going to be able to be be there to see each in every one of you with where, where you're going wrong but you'll pick up the basics from this video and then when you go into the casting event next time you go to the casting event or if you haven't gone a lot of people will be put off thinking it's a tournament there's going to be loads of good people in there and that yes there is but the only way you're going to learn is to learn off of other people and i know for a fact that um westwood casting um all the guys down there uh, mike benfield uh, ian ford and that they're all really nice genuine lads a lot of them don't fish anymore they, they they're specifically only involved in the casting now that's their hobby and a, a variant as well he's a lovely guy on I know he's took me to the side when I first started going down there and um, helped me out and showed me how, where the lead goes and stuff like that. But I had a few different people to teach me. I had Steve Pucky, I've had Gareth Davis from Wales, I had um, Mike, Bo uh, 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 Mike Bowen, something like that from Wales, never lad, what I met down at Westwood, really nice guy. He helped me out as well. But a lot of them would teach me different things where. Gareth used to teach me with my leg placement and, and arm placement and movement of the hips and Steve Pucky was w w where he used to do his swing and, and his arm placement and then obviously um, the other one was where I, he put a step into my cast which to be honest I wasn't specifically ready for but and so I, I was happy with my casting distance I ain't gonna lie and then when I met Adam he sort of like opened my eyes to it because Adam when you go fishing with Adam It'll make it look effortless, and I mean effortless. Where I need room, like where I am today is perfect, because I've got loads of room to swing my arms out, you know what I mean, get that lead flying around like a pendulum cast and hit it to the horizon, where I do struggle off of some marks where I've got no room behind me. So I'm trying to overhead thump it, and I can't specifically get my lead in that position where I want to. Where Adam, it will show you a different way of doing it. It's a layback cast, where the lead goes sideways on and comes back, and as it drops down, you don't need a lot of room behind you. It's to do with the left and right of you which you've always got room with and it will send the bait out to the horizon with that so what we're going to do you're basically going to go over with adam overhead thump the uh layback cast and then the one you've all been waiting for the pendulum cast guys now as i said it'll be put step by step through we're going to get adam to come through now and uh fantastic day for it obviously uh sees perfect conditions and it's a little bit snaggy ground close in but we will get our leads back at distance and uh here we go so let's get into it Okay, guys, so here we have the one and only Mr. Adam Slack. You're on, mate? Yeah, you. Down here today. Yep. Right, it's been something we've been asked a lot about, and you've been obviously up for helping us out with it and go through. So, a little bit of background. I've got obviously gone through like your casting history and stuff like that. Yeah. When did you start getting into your casting? Many, many years ago. Probably yeah. uh, when I was about 17 years yeah. old, I reckon. Yeah. And worked work through. When you first started off, how hard was it for you to obviously pick up the techniques and stuff like that? Uh, to get where I am now, it, it took years. Did it? Yeah. Practice and practice, practice and practice. practice. Nearly every evening. Was it? Like, yeah. It took you away from fishing big time. It did. It? I stopped pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Whilst we were travelling, sort How of. How many thing, years yeah. did you do it that for? Um, what travelling? Yeah. I uh, was on off about five years, man. Going all over the place. Yeah, Europe mainly, and yeah. 
taking part in every event going. Yeah, really. Greece, France. You know. And your furthest cast is, I know we've got the badge uh, down there, 310. 312, yeah. 312 yards. Yeah. And how many people in the world have actually cast over 310? Oh, I'm not too sure. It's probably on a. On the well, yeah, we were talking about like, it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Five or five six, or six people, people, I reckon. Yeah, and a lot of them are, are, are British as well, aren't they? Big Danny uh, must have. Oh, a lot of them are, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got Andy, Andy you've got Coppin. Danny, um, Phil Jones. Phil Jones. A Yourself. A few other ones, I think, that's done it. Is there? Yeah. Yeah. But, it's a very long way. Very, it is very a long, long way. way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's uh, and it's not sort of thing what a lot of these it, guys are going to be able to do with fishing reels. It's, oh it's, no, it's, no, it's, no, it's, no, no! This is um, having your rod set up this for is, it. This is total dedication to even polishing lines and yeah. even your rings. You're making sure they're all it's crazy, smooth, no friction or anything. Yeah. Your reels have got to be running absolutely perfect. Um, yeah. That's where be, I wouldn't go into it because yeah, my reels are running for. Yeah, you don't need it. Yeah. You don't yeah. need. Um, uh, fishing reels to go in the field. You know they're no. not for that. No. So um, I mean they're designed for it. not to get wet basically you yeah. know so so well, after that you obviously started going how much how much did you find that played a big part in your fishing with like species and stuff being able to cast oh massive yeah, yeah places where i need it it helps massively it's always a tool to have oh it. god yeah it's always better to have it than not isn't it yeah. so 100%. Uh, i found that you know when you're down chesel and you know bristol channel especially when you've got that tide line by yeah, just having the just, baits you, in that tide line rather than not in the tide line well, is, that's it. sometimes you know, it, it helps out with the ray fishing big time and, and yeah. up, say up the channel there you know and yeah so we're going to go through the first one now, which we're going to go through the overhead thump, get yes. you all set up for that, okay. and then we'll go through the overhead thump, and then once we've done that, obviously we're going to go through layback. the layback cast, which I'm going to enjoy doing because I can't pick it up. It's not the easiest cast to pick up, it's arm placement. It's easy thing. once you've done it once, once yeah. and then it's yeah. muscle memory. That's what you've got to do, you've got to think about muscle memory. Yeah. Once you've done it once, yeah. it'll all fall into And then play. we've got the one and only, the pendulum cast, which many of them are looking forward to. So let's get Adam all set up, and then we'll jump right into it. Right, first off, we're going to do a um, just an overhead dump just to wet the line. I don't normally do overhead dumps, but uh, there's nothing special about them. It's just uh, you look up and you, you just hit it basically. And that's uh, it's quite a standard universal cast, really. Um, you want your lead sort of like just around where your, your last ring is. You don't want it too long on this. And then you just, I like to just put a little bit of a swing in it just so it goes out. What you don't want to do is you don't want to bring the tip in to here and then cast because the tip will bend round to your lead and normally that creates like your rod to snap. Um, it's an unnatural curve for the rod because it will come back on itself. So again, ideally you want to let the lead in, out, in, and then as it falls out, that's it. It's nothing special about an overhead dump, it's just, it's just a universal Chuck them. I do that sort of like when you're hussing or, or things like that. I don't normally do it on the beach. Um, let's get this in. I've got a squeaky reel. <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's something in here that's uh, causing that. Okay, I'm doing the layback cast now. All right, so layback cast, again, you want a fairly longest drop on this. And the whole point of this is to put the lead on the outside of the tip. We're doing hardly any effort at all. Um, and it's what I do for 95% of my fishing. It really is that good, you know, and um, it's very bird's nest proof. You're not gonna hit the ground. It's unlikely that you're gonna get knots fail or rigs parting. Um, it's just an overall safe cast. Um, again, you want to drop just above your right hand, so, um, you know, that's perfect. You know, you don't want to go any shorter than that. And then what you do with this is you look at where you're going, stand nice and comfy, right? And then, so after you've got your foot in correct, you know, and you're looking at where you're going, it's literally, you've got to swing the lead left, not 
like diagonally out, it's got to go left and then it will come to the right and as the lead goes up you allow it to float for about a second and that will create a little bit of lead speed and you'll get a scooping effect. If you hit the lead when it's up here too early you'll feel like the rod is just hitting thin air. It's, uh, you'll know it when you do it because you hear like a noise and that's it. Um, but again what you're trying to do is not get that lead inside the tip because it's how you break rods. Um, it's just, it's not natural for the rod to compress that way. So I'm going to do this now. So obviously, let just dangle straight. Okay, so left, first, to that, up, level drop. Then you hit, there you go. Hardly any effort in that. Easy. But um, it's absolutely critical in that cast to let that lead free fall for about a second. So, basic setup again, when you're practicing casting, you want to double up your knots, double grinner knots, with a lead clip, which is really important. Um, this protects your knot, and in future casts, you know, that's the bit that fails normally. So, um, especially if you're going to casting field as well, you're not allowed to cast without a clip. It's really important. Now, again, I'm going to cast this one more for a sec, and then the lead's got to go left, straight, and then you let it fall down and then up it will go and then as you turn that so as your lead's gone up like there you push your left out like this okay and then you'll turn that's all that is and it's basically an off the ground cast without your lead on the ground that's all it is it's just um be just getting a lot more compression into the rod okay so lead just above right arm Okay, so you want to be in a nice comfy position on the ground. So nice and smooth, nice and slow. Left, right, the lead's gonna drop for a second. And away it goes. So, and that is all you need for fishing. You don't need really to be doing pendulum casting and, and stuff, you know. You know, with pendulum casting on a beach, it's, it can be quite dangerous. To the person next to you you know it's uh, not so much the casting it's component fails a lot of the time so if a if a, a knot or a clip fails it will fail there and the lead doesn't go out to sea it'll go to your right if you're right-handed the lead will go across the beach and if you've got people standing there it's uh, it could kill someone just like that it's uh, it's that dangerous that's why um, I rarely do it on the beach especially when there's a lot of people around So, with arm placement, let's throw this on there. So when you've, um, obviously, you swung the leg to your left, to the right, okay, and your right arm is just a pivot in this. So, left to the right here, and your left, after you swung it up and the leg's dropping, you'll push your left out like this, and as you're coming around, you'll be looking up in the air, and that is, uh, that is it. And that is how you stand for an off the ground cast, but only your leg's not on the ground. So, uh, it's just, physics is just, Obviously with a lead travelling not much distance, but it's, it's pulling against the tip the whole time, or the midsection. Um, it's just little things like that. I mean, I do this for all my fishing. It's all left, right, and around. 
and that is it. And you're in this position where you're all widely open and you just come around and then you snap your left in here. You know, after a day on the field, you get bruises on here because you're hitting it so hard that the tip will just, and all the reel hits you in the ribs. It's, uh, it's just one of them things, but it's, you just got to learn that snap at the end. So I'll do it one more time for a sec. So again, just above your right arm. Okay, yep. So look at where you're going. Nice and comfy. Okay, so let's still. So you want to fling it to the left, to the right, left arm out. And away it goes. And that will beat any off the ground cast that you do. Um, for fishing wise, you know, because you know when you're on a beach, it's not a flat surface. You've got a slope behind you, so uh, and that's not really what you want for an off-the-ground cast. But doing this, it doesn't really matter. You know, I, I do all this at the Bristol Channel, all my fishing basically. It's uh, it's a good cast to learn. But I say the main tip is to let that lead drop behind you. If you don't do that, you'll chop over the top, and it'll just be like hitting thin air with the rod. So now we're going to do um, from a different angle on lead placement, um, how not to put it inside the tip. What I mean by that, you don't want it inside the arc. Um, the whole point of this is to have, you don't want the lead in here, otherwise the tip will bend in. You could pile far less pressure to that. And like I say, I've seen rods snap by doing this. So if you've got a pendulum cast, your lead goes out, it'll come up and then come down a very steep angle and it's inside the tip. So the tip will bend very sharply to the lead. And you're trying to stop that by creating the lead to be outside. And I'll just show you that in a second. All right, here we have my mate, Luke Johns. It's gonna go through him just a couple little tips here. I've been through it with you already, I know, but um, we'll just, uh, we'll do it on the film there and then they can, uh, you can see, and I'll hold the lead exactly where you're gonna pick it up from. So you can see the difference between inside the tip and outside the tip. And then uh, we'll see how that one goes, eh? Okay, so what I mean by um, lead placement is if, uh, I'll show you right, look, if you just go in your casting position here, so left arm out, okay? Now, the lead, so let me sit down a little bit, all right, so you're about to hit it, okay? Left arm up a little bit, so you're here. Now, with lead placement, okay, if I go over here, <laughs> right, pull the rod, Luke. See that? See that the tip did all the work? Yeah. Right? And if I put pressure on that, you can't feel much, can you? Like, right? So if I now stand over there, right? so the lead is now outside the tip, which is where your lead's going to come from, now feel the pressure with less bend in the rod. Yeah, I can really See? Feel that? So there's hardly any bend in that rod, and your lead is out on the outside. So the tip is hardly doing any work, which means you're using the butt section and the mid section in this. The tip shouldn't be doing anything. It's no pattern in the, in the you know, the tip section there on the top end of it anyway. You know, so when, when you do a pendulum cast, this is where you want your lead to be and the layback cast. See, I'm um, at a right angle to loop there, which means the lead is on the outside of the tip. Okay, so we're going to do one last cast. I'll put on this lovely colored lead from Luke's tackle box. <laughs> and um, hopefully you can see a bit more lead positioning from this angle here. Okay, so again, lead, I like it just above my right hand there. Okay, so you want to Straight off the tip there, let it dangle, All right? So you want to flick it to the left, left, tick, tock, and then out to the left. And that's as you come around and hit it then. And that's all that is. A bit of weed. Get that off. Okay, so I'm gonna sling this one out now. Ugh. Also, always wear a thummy or a strap here. Otherwise you'll get a thumb slip most times, especially if the hands are wet. Okay, so, nice and straight. So left, right, let it drop, and then back it. It's always good to look up as well, because the lead will go where you're looking. So if you're looking up at 45 degrees, the lead will go at 45 degrees. If you're looking down at the horizon, it's gonna go 
very low, which is what you can do when it's really windy, to be fair. So if you've got a headwind, I quite often like um, punch it low because uh, you don't want a very high lead doing that. It's, uh, you want to punch right through it. They're all over on here, but keen. There we go. Okay. These are good casting rules, these are. They're, uh, seem to have hit the nail on the head, apart from that little bit of a mag situation going on with it. You see it's digging into my wrist. Okay, so uh, now we're going to move on to the pendulum cast and see how we get on with that. Tricky line. <laughs> that looked like it was getting closer. Right. Pendulum casting. Um, I'm using the same setup as I do the layback casting, so same rod, same reel, 175 lead. Um, now, when I tell people how to do this, I would say the first bit is the worst bit, is throwing the lead away. So, um, it's the hardest technique is to do is just to swing the lead away at the right height to allow it to fall to create lead speed without causing slack blind between the rod and the lead. Um, that's the hardest part. Then there's two stages after that. One is where, um, call it the scoop, that's what I call it. So once you've thrown the lead away, you dip the rod, and instead of doing that, you push down and out, and that will flick that lead. So instead of it coming in and up, it'll come in and then it'll come around. And that's how you get the lead outside the tip. You can create massive lead speed with doing this. Um, so yeah. Again, three steps. So one is lead away, dip the rod, and as that lead falls, you push the wheel down and out. And then you're in this position here then, and then you just turn and hit it. Now, depending on how your foot stance is, um, it's a bit hard on these rocks. I like to have, uh, so I'll, I'll face where I'm going, I'll bend my knees and I'll swing my left foot round just so I can create a bit more of an arc. Feet space, nice and comfy, bend your knees, get comfy, and then what I tend to do is bring my left foot around, which makes it more comfy for me to swing around to like one, two o'clock instead of 12 o'clock. If you have not space like this, it just gets a bit twisty on your back, throwing it away to one o'clock. So by spinning that around, without even knowing it, naturally, as you come around, you'll spin that left round without even thinking about it. So again, the hardest bit, after you've done that foot stance, is led away. So I have to drop on the right hand, or as long as you want, it varies for some people. I know my mate Andy Coppin, he adds his drop down to here. I mean, I learned most of this from him. Um, you know, so he adds a hugely long drop. Um, but I've always found on my right hand, 
the same with like Paul Baker and, and Matt Skelly, you know, who I cast with, who I learnt with basically over the years. Um, but I've just found that's perfect for all rods, even on my SUs. Um, it seems universal for us to have my lead on your right arm. The only problem is, is sometimes if you get that out some wrong and the leg comes back at you, it hits your hand and that hurts. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is get in a position. Right, I'm gonna throw the lead away. So you'll let the lead dangle. Okay, nice and loose. So rod up, lead comes in, dip your left, dip, scoop. And that is it. And my lead will come all the way around, right outside the tip, and it'll come right behind you over there. And uh, that's how you want the lead. And that's where it'll be every time. On the sand, if you keep doing that and letting the lead hit the ground, it'll hit almost in the same spot every time, just by uh, getting that lead on the outside of the tip. Really slow. There's no snatchiness in this. It's all almost one smooth movement from one step into the next, into the last stage. Okay, so again, let the lead sit still. So the lead will come in. It'll go to your hand, you dip the rod, left, and I'm in this position again. And it'll always end up here. And that's and when you're here, you'll always automatically open your legs up and then you'll hit it. And that just comes naturally. The hardest bit is that first bit. It's that setup. It's uh, throwing the lead away to enable it to drop. There's a puddle here, and my lead will always land in that puddle in the same place nearly every time on this cast. It's, uh, it'll always follow the same track outside the tip and it'll come down. So, nice comfy position, bend your knees, bring your left up, left foot across, it looks a bit weird. So, lead still, nice and slowly, in, dip the rod, left. And there's the puddle again, it's only a little puddle and it hits it every time. With seaweed. Okay, so also you should never do this without a casting aid, i.e. a thummy or strap. I don't like these too much. They're, they're, I use them for fishing, but I prefer a thummy. Um, it's just something I've always used. But even with a layback cast, you know, if your hands are wet, it can be dangerous because, like I say, if you crack off or a component fails, it will go to the right-hand side along the beach. If, um, if you just birdie it, it will go out to sea and it'll just happen over on or whatever. That happens. But when a component fails, a clip, a knot, it will not go out to sea. It'll go to the right-hand side. And whoever's there could get hit. Um, that's why when you're on the field, no one's allowed past the right-hand side of the hockey. Um, it's like when there's a left-hander caster, everyone has to go to his right-hand side to get away from it. So uh, it's pretty uh, critical that you, you do that. Keep to the right or keep to the left of him. Let in, dip. Okay, my arms are aching now, so uh, I'm going to give the rod to Andy and uh, go through uh, the steps with him. He knows it pretty much anyway, but uh, it's like a little refresher sort of thing. There we go. Okay. Right, here's Andy. Now, we've done this before, haven't we? Many so, times, uh, many times. We'll, uh, we'll go through it now and uh, see what he's forgotten. To be honest, he's been down here now and he's been, I don't it's know, about 10, 12 chucks now. Maybe we've been doing it and he's had a few chucks and it do, when you're casting over and over and over again, it's, it does have a Yeah, it does that, it. winding it in. It's yeah. constant, you know I mean? There's a lot of goals running, like Adam was showing you then, especially with this cast, because as you obviously the lead swing and that's the easy part, but as you're coming around, you, you're actually putting everything you've got into the cast. So, yeah. um, let's have a go then, lads. Let's have a go. There you go. Right, look, can I change a few things then? And, right, so, pretend that's the hockey there, yep. here, so I want you to stand, like this, out to sea, alright, so, alright, on that flat bit there, alright, now, bring your left foot round, take your left foot, that's your right, so you're facing that there, alright, left foot round, okay, and that's the position you're going to go in, alright, and automatically, 
that will f come around and you'll be open, right? So, lead on your hand. It's too short. The longer the drop, the smoother the cast, all right? So again, lead out, let it float down, and then scoop. There, and as you see, hit the puddle again. So the lead's in the right place. The lead's outside the tip, and without doing any movement, the lead is going at a silly space, and you know, it's going when a lot faster. When I first obviously went with Adam, because my, my style of casting before, I used to have a really long drop, and where I'd be casting like this, where Adam's taught me now, I'd be going out like that and in, you know what I mean? And especially this scooping, you know, is something I had to pick up because I used to cast that way. So I'd go out like that and then come in like that, but not necessarily with the scoop what I'm no. showing you. And my lead, that's that special mark, mark where I get away with it, your rod marks, my lead used to come right past the bottom of my, my ankles. And, um, that's where I used to get the distance with, but obviously with this, I would say, out of everybody I've seen, this is the basic and easiest performance of the pendulum it's, cast. It's the best standard. And, and, it's, and it's most effective. It's the most effective, yeah, and anyone can do this. Yeah. It's nothing fancy in it, it's just... I can remember first starting this bit here, where you, this is the bit where you used to do me, because it's, like you said, it's, it's getting, so for some people, it's just everything slow. Yeah, and also if you look, Andy's right arm, doesn't pull back. So as he swings the lead away, it will stay at one o'clock. So there's no chasing the lead. If you chase the lead, you kill the lead speed. So um, I think another thing to, to put into it, because a lot of people seem to think, keep that arm straight. Yeah, that arm it's, straight. I remember Nick used to say, he used to have like a broom it's a, when he was casting. It's a big topic that, isn't it? Yeah, you know? but what, obviously with, the, with what Adam showed us, it automatically wants to bend. You can't cast with a complete straight arm. Um, Obviously, you throw it away, it will lock out, and then as you push your left out, it will bend up, and then you come around. And you always want that little bit of kink in it to do the pull and punch at the end. It's a puddle every time, and it's, and so it's true. That is something which if, I went over 10 times. I yeah, to and with the lead inside the arc, you're going to hit the rocks in here, you know? So it'll come up, it'll stall, and then you'll pick it up, and it's, it's, what, I, it's what you call a dead lead. Yeah, if you're practicing it, what I used to do, I used to go down to the beach, so I'd, I'd have 10 casts, but before I even cast, I'd cast practice that swing, what you want yeah. them show me. And what I used to do, is there was a lead, uh, where the lead went the first time, I'd put a circle around it, right? And then when I was doing it, I would want it to go there every time, because I know that's the correct, I'm doing it right. And it's, what I found is, uh, the hardest thing for me, when I was picking up, was rushing it. Rushing it. Because my cast was very yeah. quick. Yeah, you've got to be very slow now. now. This is like, very, very slow. But you create a very, lot more very, speed. Very, you can feel it, you can hear it. You know what I mean? There's, it's every time. I remember, there's, there's, there's bits what Adam obviously puts into his cast, obviously for the tournament sort of side, and um, when the, the, when the, what I found and learned a lot of you myself was the lead speed. How mm. much the lead speed It's critical, part. massive part. Because you can hear it, especially when Adam casts, like goes, goes down Westwood and some of the tournament casts and that, you can hear that lead whistling. I mean, I remember being down there and um, there was some of the Welsh lads mm. at, um, what are they called? Phil Jones, Jones uh, yeah. Tremendous lead speed on him. Super lad, biggest lad. He was down there. He had a free, he had a free. What's your name now? What, when we were down there last? Uh, he, 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 T1000. Welsh lad. Sheeran, is it? Andy Sheeran. No, it's Andy Sheeran. Yeah, Andrew Sheeran, yeah. Andrew, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, another. You've seen these lads. Brilliant caster, yeah. yeah. And they're literally folding them. We've got, they've got T1000s and folding them in half, but the lead speed is just remarkable. Yeah. The sound of it is, um, it's... But it's you can create that out. through the smallest effort. Yeah. That's all it is, it's just technique. And uh, and you don't get that with the lead being inside. It's all about getting it on the outside of the tip, locking your right arm so it stays where it is. It's a pivot. And his lead will travel all the way around the outside of the tip. Nice and smooth, nice and slow. It says, and see Andy automatically is in this position here, so he's all opened up, and he's gonna come around like this, dip the rod as he comes around, and then that's it, it's, you just hit it. And that's have a little cast in a minute. I'll move out your way. <laughs> Basically, I'm just gonna show, go through what, with what he showed me originally, and I'm gonna go through which, which I found easy and which I found hard to pick up. Now, obviously, one of the first things I always do is Put the reel into your armpit and the arm straight, and that's the position of my arms, yeah? So that, that's where I want my lead, near enough, okay? So it's a little bit long, just drop it slightly. 
That's perfect. Okay, so leg placement and feet placement. So when Adam has said originally, it's exactly the same as that's how Adam has is. I sort of like position mine is slightly a bit different to where I used to cast myself. So I, my foot placement's really the same as what I did do, and which I do now is my uh, is, is Adam's swing. And at the end of the day, it's everything slow. Okay, I've moved away slightly because when we're, fish, we're, we're casting over there to the left hand side of us. The rocks are formed and like Adam was saying, when you're pendulum casting, everything goes to the right, okay? That rock is something which we've hit off the rock and um, which I hit off the rock, may I add, and uh, it's flattened. Now, that going at speed, going in and hitting someone is like, like Adam said before, is very, very dangerous. So you need to be having your whereabouts of what you're doing. and. It's not recommended if you've got people to the right hand side of you really cast it out and smash them. I tend to walk down towards the sea as, way, as far as I can, or tend to go back away. So if it does go, it goes off, you know what I mean, when no one is. But as Adam said as well, it's doubling up your knots. I'll get Adam to go through that at the end of the episode. Um, and that's that. So basically, I've got to have my feet position where I am now. And uh, I haven't got a thummy. To be honest, I'll never use a thummy when I'm fishing. I don't like it because it's wear and tear on your line. Now, a lot of people are going to say, oh, you should use one, you shouldn't. I've got, I've got builder's hands. I mean, I've, I'm used to like hard, and it, at the end of the day, it's, it's one of them. If, it, if I was a tournament casting, I'd be using one non stop. But I'm fishing at the end of the day, so I'm going out, then the legs drop, scooping. <laughs> It, the rod feels a bit different because uh, I've been using my SUs for non-stop for uh, a little while now and it's, this, this is very very light but to be honest this is what I was using it's a tournament match pro um, this is what I was using when I was doing a bit of tournament casting the other year with Adam it's a lovely reel lovely rod sorry and a lovely reel these Fathom uh, casting specials are something else in my, my opinion probably the best reel available in the market for the money and um, the only thing I is, like Adam said, is the, the knobby mag on the side, which we've uh, changed and put one of the mag 525 or the mag 3 mags in there. So it just obviously slim lines the mag and does what it needs to, but fairly decent cast. Seems to go out all right. Wind's picked up a little bit. Come down here, expect to be properly uh, protected, but it's swung around. It was supposed to be northerly, I think it's gone northeasterly a little bit, isn't it? He's gone out there, all right. But, as I said again, Rear into the pit, so I've got him in there like that. That's basically where my hand's position set. What a lot of people may do when they're, when they're trying the pendulum cast is worth putting a bit of tape where the top of your hand goes, so you know exactly where it is instead of doing that every time then. But what I would do is get your, get your lead in position, like so. Don't even have your reel unclipped, you're not gonna cast, okay? So then what you wanna do is basically just practice. So out swing, real slow, let the lead drop, scoop in, okay? Goes every time. Just practice. That's the, that's what you want to practice. That is the key to the start of the cast. And everything. I remember when I was doing it. Just let just dropping down. That's all I would do. Just practice, practice. It's the first part of the cast there. Yeah. And when um, I've, I, what I found it, it was stages because what I was doing, I was getting. I think I was casting about two thirty roughly with my normal cast. I started casting with Adam. I was getting like 220s, 220s, and I was going to 230s again. It's different casting style. And then I went up and up and up, and I got to like 230s, and I was like, what's going on here? And it, what it was, was I was picking up the beginning of the cast, but I was, it was struggling trying to p p get everything put together. So it's not just, that's just the start of the cast. Obviously, then you're at, uh, getting the lead going around. Well, lead placement, which we'll go through with Adam in a minute, is one of the major things. You went through it earlier on with Luke, and it needs to be on the outside of the tip. But when you add everything together, that's when you get the distance. I was saying exactly the same. I seemed to like, I was getting like 238, 238s, 239, struggling to get over that 240. And then I had one and two casts, what were like 247 and 249, just under the 250 mark. And um, 
Yeah, it was literally that, and it would have been 250. I was gutted. I remember, I think it was Varian or one of them. Adam was there as well. I think he was up like 280s or whatever that day, 290s. He had a good day on it. But the main thing is to practice. Like, what, what obviously he showed you here today, what we've gone through, is to, is to practice each individual part. And, and then when you obviously put them all together and get everything's right, that's when, that's when you'll know you've got it right. So as we said before, let, it's like that. Out swing, then let drop. See that scoop? I lowered the rod tip slightly then, just because I wanted it to go in the water there. But as Adam was showing again, out swing out, let the dead drop, scoop, then see goes round, it drops every time. But um, I'll have one more cast. Hopefully his arms feel a little bit better. And we'll get him back in here to go through positioning of the lead. Um, and what the only thing I would say is don't rush anything guys, there's no need to rush. Everything comes naturally, obviously. Well, this part at the beginning is going to be very strange. A lot of people will be casting wheel up. I mean, just feel, the, what I find is the best way is to feel the lead, okay? Just let the lead do its thing and just stay in contact with the lead. That tip and if everything to stay in contact. Just so it feels natural, not like you're trying to pull things, you know what I mean? So. Outswing, then drops. See that? It's basic scoop. It's like when you're about to go and throw a javelin. It's like you say, okay? So again, outswing, drop, lead placement, and on the outside. I have one more cast and we'll get ads back in to uh, do the bits. It's always hard trying to film this sort of thing because you're trying to pick up everything so we're going to try and do the best we can with it obviously different angles and stuff like that but one more cast for me okay Very nice, very nice, got into that one. That's when you can feel yourself getting into the rod. And to be honest, like he said to me a minute ago, sometimes it's nice to go back to those original pointers. I felt it myself then. My car sometimes, when you're on the beach now, you get lazy, you don't add the scoop, don't keep the, the, this lead placement in, you know what I mean? It's just silly little things which you're fishing, it don't really matter. But when you're actually tournament casting and stuff like that, it, every little bit of what you're doing helps to your distance. down to dry line there, so it must be doing something right. <laughs> it helped me on that. <laughs> we used to put little bits of paper and little bits of line in that in the reel. And um, I don't, oh, to be honest, I don't think I've beaten. <laughs> Wind is very much picked up to you today, which is uh, not what we want really. For those, I don't know, 150, 160 yards, I don't know, fishing, you can fish a line, don't know what Adam reckons. You're probably in the reading like that now. You get all these people say I'm casting 100 yards, I'm casting 150 yards, I'm casting 200 yards of a bait on. Half the time it's, they're talking out their uh, backsides. Anybody wants to see how far 200 yards is or 100 yards, best off going to a tournament caster field and you can see. I remember when I first went down to Westwood, that 200 yard mark, I thought I'm going to hit this straight away, no problem at all. You're hitting 170s, 180s, you're nowhere near it, you know what I mean? That wind has really picked up now, but uh, I'm going to pass it back over to Adam and uh, we'll move on with the uh, tutorial. Okay, right. And a bit of venue change now because uh, that wind's picked right up. It's, uh, it's a bit gross down there now. They give like snow on the moor, don't they? Uh, coming right in. Anyway, right, so again, a bit of better area to cast here as well, nice level platform. So I'm going to do a cast now, nice and slow and smoothly. So again, comfy leg stance, right? Now I always bring my left in front and my right there, and I'll come around from about one o'clock, two o'clock. All right, so lead in nice and slowly, dip the rod, left, scoop, wait, turn. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Okay, with um, now found with the timing with this is um, once you push the lead away, you scoop your left and you count in your head 1,000, 2,000, turn and hit it. That's when uh, and that will and that will have time for that lead to travel all the way around the arc to the right point of where you uh, make contact with it and uh, and hit your left into your ribs there basically. Lead on your hand. Now a couple of little tips to swinging the lead away. Okay, is to have again. It's the hardest bit. So lead stall. It's not moving. So push the left down. Okay, right arm doesn't do much here. Okay, so left down. Lead comes in. You dip, dip, left. Okay. So again, you've got to try and stop all slack line between the rod and the lead. So when you push the lead away. You've got to cushion all the slack line out of it. So, in, dip, dip. Again, always, you always end up in this position here, and you just turn and hit it then. It's simple, really, just three stages, and like I say, the first bit is the hardest bit, is that set up. I have a cast now. Okay, so foot stance. Okay, lead in, dip the rod, cushion all slack, let the lead drop, left. talk about lead position now on the pendulum cast okay so um, again I'm going to talk about how important it is to get this lead to travel on the outside of the tip and not on the inside um, it's vital that you do this okay so um, I'm going to demo actually cast off the tip yeah well this is it and, and the rod will feel soft yeah you know if the rod I mean these aren't a stiff rod but to get into the midsection they're fantastic for it isn't it because they recover so fast yeah. you know so um, you know, I mean, it is a springy tip on it, but again, the power's not up there; it's here. So it's what you, I mean, you always tell a good cast as well because you won't, you get a real crisp finish. So the rod will go like that without any over recovery. You know, you can always tell a good finish. So if you go too early, if you hit thin air, or if the lead's inside the tip, your tip will rebound too much and it'll spring, and that causes crack offs, which is uh, not, not what, what you, you want. want. Right, so I'm going to show you on the rod. The difference in the tip sections and how they work in, with lead position, right? So if you stand as if you're about to hit the cast, so you've done your cast, you've done your lead swinging, so you've gone left out, okay? Now, if the lead, stop there, stop there. So if the lead is here, where I am now, all right? Inside, hang on, I'm just caught on the tip. <laughs> yeah, so if the lead hey, is inside the tip. If it's rod, you thought it's that rod down and thought we'd have a little play. Yeah. So, Position to cast, okay? Now, if the lead is inside the tip, lower the tip down so you're about to hit it, okay? If the lead is inside the tip, I'm not going to put much pressure on this, but can you see the rod bend with that? I'm, put, the I'm putting no pressure on that and the rod is bending, which is not what you want. Now, if I put the same pressure 
over here, which is where you'll end up, go on Ant Paul, hardly any bend in that rod, and he's putting far more pressure on it. Yeah. Yeah, see, I'm not going to put any pressure on this, and yet he's under a lot more pressure. See? And that's where you want the lead. So the tip's not actually doing anything here. It's all, uh, it's all between your arms. It's probably about that ring there, isn't it? And that's where the power is. That's the mix section. That's what you need to get into every time. Even with that layback cache, you're still getting in to the butt section of that rod. That's it. And see where he is? So he's done that. He activated the scoop. He comes down and out with the scoop. What I've done then, just by having this wavy lead, put me off my lead position. Yeah, like kind of he's like kinked. Out. Scoop. Out. See, and now look, see he's out in that position there. So the lead will put his left arm higher than his right, and his right arm is still locked towards that cliff face. So it's just a pivot there, and that's it. And then he's ready to hit that. He's turning and hitting that. Now, if you hang on to like a couple set, like 1,000, 2,000 on the time in, that lead will travel all the way around to the outside, and that's where he picks it up from, and then he hits it. There, look at that. See that rod recover nice then? Lovely. Try line as well. <laughs> Out there. <laughs> so that cast that Andy just did then was really good. You know, he, um, he really did that scooping well. The lead positioning was good. And um, without any effort at all, he just comes around and hits it. And you don't have to put too much brute force into it, no, do you? No. And, it, and it just flies. Um, it's that effortless. And, and you can always tell a good cast because you get that finish at the end where the rod just goes, you'll hear it, you know, and, um, and that's always a sign, you know, that you've done a real good technical, technically good cast there, which is what that was just then. So, well done. I do. <laughs> I do. So, um, next stage now is to go through um, time, time in really, as, yeah. you, as you said before, and that's one thing I had to wait because you kept, when I first started, it was when to know when to hit it. It's always better to go too slow than too fast. As soon as that lead goes past your head, half the time you, people want to turn into the cast. Straight away. And it's the wrong thing to do. As Adam said then, you cast it inside of the tip, you need to let that lead move around. Yeah. And sometimes it is worth watching. You know what I mean? Practice it and worth watching and keeping your head 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 and think about where that lead is when you're watching it. And then when you're turning around then, Make sure you're same speed and everything. You don't need to look at it then. You're going one, two, yeah. three. And, and you can vaguely feel it. Yeah, you, you can, yeah. And, and I found that on the 1,000, 2,000, that's your timing. Hit. That's your hit. And then that's every time I count that, I say that in my head now, and it's perfect every time. Yeah. So, and you know, when you do go too early, you drag it out of its natural orbit and you deck the ground all the time, most, most times anyway, because obviously the lead's still traveling up behind you. And then you pick it up here and you bring it into the ground. Instead of it coming all the way around here, and that's where you pick it up, you're gonna bring it up from there and just, well, you hit the ground. It's just I, was, I used to, with my old cast, the style of casting, I used to pick the lead up here, and it was inside the tip, and that's why. And the reason I'm getting, and half the time now, if anything's to the right, it's gonna hit, is because of where you're loading the rod up and where the lead is leaving it to. So everything's coming to the right, as you said, mm -hmm. and that's where the power is, and it is important. I mean, if you're actually practicing anywhere, to make sure there's no one around you. I mean, especially like Adam said before, especially to your right. the tennis ball, just that initial swing, even as the tennis ball, just the lead like that, just practice in, in going in, out, let it drop and turn around the scoop, you know what I mean? Somewhere with sand is ideal because you just like, you can literally lock, drop the lead straight into it. And it's worth just going over and over and making sure that's right and right and right. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna get Adam to do some of the more casting and film some different angles because we want to try and get mm. as much as we can in. So, so it, cause this is a very difficult thing to actually film, isn't it? To yeah, get, it is, isn't it? Right. You can't see the lead, it's, no. it's moving too fast. A lot of people fast, watching it are gonna go away and think, 
oh that's ideal we'll go and pick it up but you will get bad habits you're yeah. bound to get bad habits but it's picking up those bad habits so what we're going to try and do now is to put you in to the point of view where we can pick out some of those bad habits now and obviously move them around and hopefully you, you pick it up correctly so game on Matt again Well guys, we very much hope you enjoyed the, uh, the, the production and uh, there's a few hints and tips there along the way. It's, a, it's an effective and easy way to perform the pendulum cast, in my yeah. opinion. It's probably the best way I've, I've ever been shown. Um, it's not hard to pick up once you pick it up. Lots of practice. And anything else you want to give the viewers? Don't crack off. <laughs> Last cast. Last cast. Yeah. No, it's on all serious note though, it's just... Everything's got to be slow, yep. smooth, yep. take out any jerkiness in it, any loose lines, slack lines, you know, you just want it all nice, smooth and slow. And, and remember always when you push your left out is to push down and out, if, you know, not out, down. It might be a good one for the Facebook group and get Adam a bit active as well. And he's probably going to hate me from saying this with 20,000 people in there. But if you want to put a few videos on, on the group of you, you're casting. Yeah, I'm well, quite happy to comment and know that. He's probably, yeah. the, probably the best person to watch what you're doing wrong. He'll give you a bit of advice. If, if you, your feet are too close together, your arms are bit or you, you're rushing into the cast, he's going to pick it up. So yeah. feel free to add, put them onto the Facebook group, the Angle Adventures Facebook group. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, guys. There's a lot of people who watch these videos but aren't subscribed to the channel. It amazes me. But to keep up to date as everything what we're doing, please subscribe. And uh, from myself and the rest of the Sea Angle Adventures team, tight lines. Next time.